morning everyone, well, good day, good afternoon. So uh, we proceed uh, our conference with the talk by the new Uru, who is going to tell us on, uh, who is going to inform us on structural aspects of UKI categories, Dini. Okay, well, thank you, Ludmil, for the introduction. Thanks everyone for waking up and um, showing up for the talk. Um, I'm sorry to say this might be a slightly disappointing talk to people in that I have nothing really original or new to say. Uh, I just wanted to take stock of where my thinking is in terms of Fukaya categories of Lando Ginsburg models, also known as Fukaya categories of sectors, Fukaya sidle categories, and so on and so on. Um, and so the plan is to discuss a bit what is the Fouquet category of a Lando Ginsburg model, then talk about various functors that show up in this setting, and then a little bit about monodromy and decompositions in keeping with the secret theme of this meeting. Um, so the talk will touch on ideas of various people in chronological order, the symplectic strand of thought here is starting with Paul Seidel, followed by Mohammed Abu Zaid, then Shil Ganatra, um, various combinations of pairs of these, uh, Zach Selvan, Andrew Hanlon, Maxim Jeffs, but the same picture in slightly different languages has been also developed by David Nadler, by Ganatra Pardon and Shande, Ben Gamage, and also in yet different language by Konsevich, Seibelman, Kapranov, and others. Uh, probably many others I'm forgetting. And intentionally, I'm going to be sloppy about the setting in which this talk is taking place, which means most of what I say will be slightly fictional, or at least, let's say, conjectural, uh, because I think, basically, the greatest strength of Fouquet categories of Lando Ginsburg models is that if you take a different definition, there seem to be as many definitions as there are people working in the field, then you get slightly different properties. And there's clearly some common picture that hasn't been formulated yet in that level of generality that should have all the properties you want. So in some sense, I mean, the idea is what could we get if we dreamt about a better definition? So, what is a symplectic Lander Ginsburg model for the purposes of this talk? Well, it's a symplectic manifold, convex at infinity, so that we can talk about holomorphic curves and Fleur theory, uh, together with a complex valued function, which defines a symplectic vibration with allowed singular fibers. So the smooth fibers are symplectic submanifolds. But in fact, in practice, I'm very happy to assume that Y is scalar or even a quasi-projective algebraic variety. There should be some completeness assumption in that case. Uh, and that W is a holomorphic or regular function on it. So the basic piece of geometry that I want to remind people of is that such a vibration comes with a preferred horizontal distribution which is given by the symplectic orthogonal to the fibers. So it's also spanned by the Hamiltonian vector fields associated to the real and imaginary parts of the superpotential W. And parallel transport over a path that avoids the critical values of W defines, gives me symplectomorphisms between the smooth fibers. So that actually well-definedness of parallel transport is an assumption or if you want, I want to put places where parallel transport fails to be well-defined and give a symplectomorphism into the critical locus. You'll see that in a moment. Um, and so if we start from a Lagrangian submanifold in a smooth fiber, we'll get a fiber Lagrangian by parallel transport. The particular case of interest is that of vanishing cycles and thimbles. So, a vanishing cycle um, is a Lagrangian in the fiber. I have a fiber. And inside my fiber, I will have some Lagrangian little l with a property that when I transport it somewhere to a singular fiber, I seem to have 
rest of my picture, so I don't really want to do something like that, uh, then I will get a parallel transport Lagrangian that collapses entirely into the critical locus. Most classically, for Lefschetz vibrations, we think of collapsing to a point, and there's a unique vanishing cycle, which is a Lagrangian sphere in the smooth fiber. But I will use the word thimble extremely liberally and instead also allow um, things that are more general. For example, okay, so in the case of Lefschetz vibrations, the, in this case, each critical point has a unique vanishing cycle, which is a Lagrangian sphere. But we could also talk about Morse bot singularities. And then in this terminology, for every Lagrangian in the critical locus, we have an associated vanishing cycle and thimble. And then the other thing, in line with what I said about parallel transport, is I want to allow things to have possibly critical points at infinity. Uh, by that, I mean there's not really a point where DW vanishes, but a place where parallel transport fails to be well behaved. For example, if you look at x1 plus x2 from c star squared to c, you can see that the fiber over zero is different from the other fibers. It's a cylinder instead of a pair of pants. And what happens is that there is an arc in the regular fiber connecting two punctures that disappears as you get to the fiber over zero. So I want to include that in the notion of critical values. And I would say now that R plus squared inside C star squared is in fact a thimble for this vibration. Probably my terminology is messed up. But... And so I will assume that W has finitely many critical values in this extended sense, but I don't want to assume that the critical locus is isolated or even proper because some of the most interesting examples for mirror symmetry fail that assumption. So roughly speaking, what do we want to have in the Foucault category of a landau ginzburg model, a pair Y and a complex valued function W? Well, we should have admissible Lagrangians, by which we mean properly embedded or immersed Lagrangians in Y, which do not go towards the region at infinity where the real part of W becomes very negative. So we stay away from minus infinity. And that, I think, really should be mostly the only relevant requirement. The other requirements become technical conditions so that we can actually define Fleur theory. So, for example, we would want to have good control over holomorphic curves, uh, say a maximum principle at the boundary of holomorphic disks with boundary on such Lagrangians. So this can be achieved, for example, if you have an exact Liouville structure and your Lagrangians are conical at infinity. This can be achieved by open mapping principle if your Lagrangians are fibered over paths in the complex plane outside of a compact subset and fiber-wise proper. Or this can also be achieved by something called monomial admissibility, which is essentially being simultaneously fibered for a collection of functions, the setup in which this has been defined in Andrew Henlon's thesis is in C star to the N or more generally in toric varieties, when there's a bunch of monomials whose argument is constrained in suitable regions near infinity. Uh, but basically I'd be happy with anything that gives me control over holomorphic curves. I also want to assume that my Lagrangians are unobstructed. Either they don't bound any holomorphic disks or I have some way of cancelling them by a bounding co-chain so that I have a well-defined Fleur homology. And of course, I want to choose spin structures, local systems, grading data, and so on. So morphisms in the Foucault category are defined by Lagrangian Fleur theory, but after doing a suitable perturbation so that the Lagrangians are in correct position at infinity. So what do we imagine is correct position at infinity? Well, 
when we take homes from a Lagrangian L to a Lagrangian L prime, we should imagine that maybe under W they were fibered over some paths. And when we do this, we should actually push L by an isotopy that will increase the argument of the function W on the ends, but not so much as to cross the stop. So we are not going to go through the region at minus infinity. Um, we're just going to perturb counterclockwise by a finite amount. So this is already apparent, say, from Seidel's early papers on this. Uh, but there's an extra small wrinkle in the case where the Lagrangians are not fiber-wise proper. If I have things that are fiber-wise non-compact, then inside the fibers of W, I should imagine that I'm wrapping at infinity. So there's many competing definitions of such beasts in various levels of generality. Uh, some of them with nicer properties than others, some of them more fully developed than others. So one setting where life is reasonably nice is the closest to the historical development of this by Seidel. Um, if you have a Lagrangian which is fiber-wise proper, for example, the thimbles in Lefschetz vibrations, so inside each fiber over a path, you have a compact Lagrangian inside each fiber. Then, essentially, it suffices to push the path over which you fiber in the counterclockwise direction at infinity, and then do more or less ordinary Fleur field. Um, so if you're happy with Lagrangians that are fiber-wise compact, then life is essentially the nicest you can have. And this will suffice if a vibration is locally trivial at infinity. So essentially, if the critical locus is proper and there's no hidden missing points at infinity, like in the example I had earlier. Um, in the case where your total space is exact and you will, then we have actually a much more powerful language to do things, namely partially wrapped Fouquet categories or more, um, I mean, even better, we can think of this as a Liouville sector, basically. We delete the part that's near minus infinity and we view the rest as a sector. Or um, you can also think of the region near minus infinity as a stop and you consider a partially wrapped Fouquet category. So this is the most versatile construction but as far as I know, the non-exact setting has not been developed yet. It also has a slight difficulty. Um, what, do I, what do I have to say? This is the most computable in some cases and not in some others. So I'm a bit on the fence. In any case, one thing that's clear is we don't want to consider arbitrary sectors. There's a special property of the stops in land Ginsburg models, which in the language of Sylvan is that they are swappable. That means you can move them, move around from one side of the stop to the other. You can move this fiber to that fiber on either side of the stop by going around by parallel transport that way. Um, this is not part of the assumptions of general stops. It's, it's an extra property. And in the toric case, we can use uh, monomial admissibility. Now, while I'm being abstract and so on, there will be examples coming soon. Okay, I'm going fast through the general motivation and setup, but um, I'll try to do some examples and be a bit more concrete. But so one thing that's also really helpful to have in mind is that many applications work best. I mean, you, you get most of the structure if you actually allow yourself even something slightly more general, which is you want to think of your function W as being a sum of two parts. One that I will call the main term, W0, and one that I will think of as an auxiliary term or a fiber-wise term, W sub F, that I view as defining stops on the fibers of W0. So I, I will show you an example in a bit. Uh, in slightly different language, what that means is we want to decompose the stop into two pieces. Um, 
So, and then we, what we'll do is actually, instead of exploring the relative geometry of Y relative to the stop or relative to the fiber of the whole potential W, we will do it only relative to the fiber or the stop of W0. And so what, when, I, when I say fiber down uh, further, further on, when I say fiber, I will usually mean the fiber of just the W0 part rather than the whole thing. And it will be understood that this fiber is in fact itself a landau ginzburg model carrying the restriction of W sub F. Can you say a few words about the uh, uh, what's known about equivalences among all of these different models? What is known about equivalences among these different models? Essentially, very little. The I would say if I want to try to connect all three, then um, you know, in the toric setting for things like mirrors of toric varieties, or basically if I have C star to be n with a Laurent polynomial then Hanlon's thesis writes down a couple of properties about monomial admissibility setups, about like ways you decompose regions at infinity in which you impose conditions on your Lagrangians, under which there's one condition under which um, monomial admissibility is equivalent to the category, say, considered in Abu Zaid's thesis for mirrors of toric varieties, so essentially equivalent to Seidel's original definition essentially by arguing that if you control the arguments of the largest terms in the superpotential, then that means you control the argument of some semi-tropical approximation to the superpotential where you discard all of the terms that are not the leading ones. And so there's a truncation process to relate the two. And meanwhile, um, this is also related to sectors and stops because uh, one can see that the part of the boundary of inf at infinity of C star to the N where monomial admissibility forces your Lagrangian to go to retracts onto the skeleton of the stop that appears in Fang Liu Troyman Zaslow's work on toric mirror symmetry. So for mirrors of toric fanos, it's kind of it's basically understood that all three setups are equivalent. Beyond that, I'm not aware of very much because the settings in which things have been defined tend to be sufficiently different that it's a pain to do it. Uh, the expectation for is that all three should be equivalent when they are well defined, uh, with a caveat, of course, that th this one, uh, there's an assumption, or else you need to kind of say what you will do with fiber-wise infinity. Uh, another small comment here is we'll encounter at some point the issue of is it the same thing to consider W as a single thing or to split it into terms? And in some sense, what um, you know, what's the dependence on the way in which we split the stop into two pieces? Does this affect the category of Y, W? Obviously, it shouldn't, uh, but that's not easy to prove necessarily. And Anyway, basically, again, I think that's only known in the case of C star to the N with Laurent polynomials. So my guess is one can probably do more using tropical techniques. Uh, maybe you know more than I do about this. Anyway, I will continue. So the fiber-wise wrap category, so just to kind of give an example of a setup and say more on what monomial admissibility does. Uh, let's say that Y is a toric variety, not necessarily C star to the N, and we have a polynomial, well, a regular function basically on Y as superpotential, but we separate it into a main term, which I think of as just being maybe a single monomial in my main example that I have in mind, and auxiliary terms. So the objects of the category would be properly embedded Lagrangians with extra data, as usual, but with basically, so the technical conditions of admissibility are on one hand that when I project my Lagrangian under W0, I should get something which is fibered. And 
specifically because of a modular inestability setup, I wanted to be fibered at infinity over radial arcs, so that the argument of W0 is locally constant at infinity. And then inside the fibers of W0, F sub t, I will have some fiber-wise Lagrangians, which I want. So the fibers of W0, if it's a monomial, are just again going to be toric varieties. And so I will want to impose admissibility again with respect to a collection of toric monomials in the monomial admissibility sense. But now you see that you could split things and do things differently, use a different notion of admissibility fiber-wise and in the base. The main thing I care about, I think, for the purposes of what's coming up next, is that my Lagrangians should be fibered for the main projection. So I want a setup, I mean, fibered at infinity for the main projection. Uh, and again, I could discard that, but that would be the hardest thing to achieve in the purely conical setups. Usually there's a tension in geometry between whether your Lagrangian is conical for a Liouville structure or whether it's fibered for a regular function. And um, my corner of life is slightly easier if I'm fibered for W0. Anyway, so uh, let's just get through this to an example because this is kind of a bit too abstract. Um, so, I, so another comment for that I need to make here is when I do these setups where I have two different potentials or two different admissibility conditions, base-wise and fiber-wise, an important thing that comes up in practice is I want to ensure that parallel transport between the fibers of W0 preserves admissibility for the fiber-wise potential W sub F. And so in this setup of toric varieties, this forces us to use um, toric Keller forms for which the different terms that we have Poisson commute at fiber-wise infinity. And that's actually an important condition. Essentially, it says that W0 and WF should really be consisting of independent terms. I'm not allowed to just split, say, a function into, say, twice, you know, half itself plus half itself. That would not be a fruitful thing to do. Actually, that would, that would probably be okay, but whatever. Um, anyway, so if we have an admissible Lagrangian, now we can talk about perturbing it by a flow which will increase the arguments of these things that we've said should have constant arguments at infinity, whether it's the main term W0 or the fiber-wise monomials that control the behavior in the fibers. And I will set up this flow to increase the values of all these arguments, staying within a bounded range, say minus pi over 2 pi over 2, so that we never go to minus infinity for the main term, and also for the terms that appear in the fiber-wise potential. And meanwhile, anything else that I need just to control the argument of for technical reasons, but that I have in mind will be part of a fiber-wise wrapping, I will let the argument of those terms increase to infinity. And so now, anyway, so basically there's a definition that works. It's in the non-existent paper of Mohammed and I, but it's, um, well, it might appear at some point. Um, but my guess is that, in fact, there are variations on this theme, maybe combining different notions, like fiber-wise conical at infinity, but controlled argument in the base or things like that. Um, one should be able to make such definitions outside of a toric setting. And one should be able to define two-stage categories in this way, with like a splitting of a potential into a main term and an auxiliary term, whose objects are fibered Lagrangians for the main term W0, but not necessarily fibered for the total potential in ways that agree with other versions. Okay, so let's, let, let's work through an example of this construction just to kind of get a hang of what this is about. So this is probably the most studied example of the last decade. Um, so C cubed with a function Z1, Z2, Z3, the product of the coordinates is the mirror to the pair of pants. And my favorite Lagrangian to consider, the one that forces me to um, allow fiber-wise non-compact Lagrangians and 
deal with fiberwise wrapping is the thing obtained by parallel transporting r plus squared, which is inside c star squared, uh, the fibers of this arc, c star squares, along a u-shaped arc. So first I'll describe the geometry directly and then we'll recast this in terms of functors. So uh, my green Lagrangian is the one I'm looking at, L0. I take a U-shaped arc in the base and over that U-shaped arc, the fibers of this map are just copies of C star squared, Z1, Z2, Z3 equals constant and C cubed. But the fiber over zero is singular. It's the union of the three coordinate planes in C cubed. So if I take L0, which is a um, just R plus squared, and I parallel transport it, I get this Lagrangian, which is topologically just a, I mean, it's contractible, it's a, it's a disk. Um, experts in the world of stops and so on will recognize that, you know, what is this in the language of stops? We have a stop, which is a C star square fiber at minus infinity, whose core is really just a T2, it's a T star T2. And this Lagrangian we're looking at is in fact the linking disk of the um, of the core of the stop. Uh, so everybody agrees, whatever their language, that this is the most interesting Lagrangian in this Landau Ginsburg model. Anyway, so in the language of monomial admissibility, I would say set a thing, set things up with a Kähler form on C cubed, so that we can arrange uh, that fiber-wise the largest coordinates have a real positive wherever they're much larger than the others. And you can arrange the Kähler form on C cube in such a way that parallel transport along the U shape is actually going to preserve this property. So even if I start with R plus squared and then it gets bent at infinity by the monodromy of this vibration, I can preserve this technical condition. And now, the perturbation I need to define the homes from L0 to itself involves pushing things off slightly counterclockwise in the base direction, which creates two intersections between the paths in the base and wrapping in the fiber, which in involves basically creating infinitely many intersections fiber-wise, or rather taking a direct limit over larger and larger finite sets of intersections. So at the end, we find that the endomorphisms of this object L0, well, the Fleur complex has one copy of the fiber-wise intersections over this point minus one and the Fleur complex over there. Both of those end up being the same as the wrapped Fleur complex of this little L0 inside C star squared, um, which means I will get a copy of Laurent polynomials in two variables once here in degree zero and once here in degree minus one, which I think means shift should actually be by one. Um, and the boundary map between the two is going to be a Fleur differential that counts holomorphic sections over this region. And one can check that this boundary map turns out to be multiplication by one plus x1 plus x2. And so you find passing to cohomology that indeed the self-fleur cohomology of L0 with this choice of perturbation ends up agreeing with the ring of functions of the pair of bands. And this is kind of the main step in proving homological mirror symmetry for the pair of bands in this language. So now, variation on, th on this theme, let's put a fiber-wise potential. So I will still think of C cubed, with a projection to C given by the product of the coordinates. But I will put extra terms now in a fiber-wise potential, which are just the sums of the coordinates. So the mental picture I want to have in mind is still the same that I had before, because I'm still projecting with respect to uh, the product of the coordinates. But fiber-wise, now the fibers are still C star squared, but they're equipped with a potential that looks like, well, Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3, but Z3 is constant over Z1, Z2. And so we know, you know, this is one of the 
of our most studied examples, the Foucault category of this Landau Ginzburg model on C star squared, this is the mirror of P2. This corresponds to coherent sheaves on P2. And the stop picture for that corresponds to, well, you still have a stop at the fiber at minus infinity, but you also have a fiber wise stop at, oh gosh, I'm not sure if I know how to draw this properly. Um, but basically, there are going to be now fiber wise stops along the skeleton of a fiber of this map. And um, this says fiber wise will have the mirror of P2. So if you redo the calculation above, what will happen is you no longer wrap fiber wise. You do instead small push offs as in the Foucault Seidel category of this Landau Ginsburg model. And you will end up with, in fact, the derived category of a P1 inside P2, of a, of a hyperplane defined by sum of coordinates equals zero. So one can use this language and do these calculations by hand to get to a proof of homological mirror symmetry for hypersurfaces, uh, hypersurfaces and in fact also for complete intersections in C star to the N and with a bit more work in toric varieties. This would be the case of a pair of points in C star squared and its compactification to a line inside P2. Um, but that's a different story. Uh, see my last year's Miami talks, for example. Nick, can I ask you, you, you mentioned above uh, that, you know, one of the perspectives here is the alluvial sectors, but this uh, sum of potentials, I might really like to regard as sort of a cornered alluvial sector. Yes, um, uh, sorry, oh, is... before I do that, I, I should have put Nadler's name um, next to the sector version of this. Uh, but yes, so that's right. This, this, this leads to the idea of a cornered alluvial sector. And another thing here is in this case, with enough squinting and staring, you can convince yourself that you can think of this setup here as both a corner alluvial sector, or you can smooth the corners. You know, you can round the corners and go back to uh, you know, a usual alluvial sector. Uh, so I think in some sense, the, 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 the imprecise stuff I'm trying to say about splitting W as sums of terms and so on, is like creating or rounding corners in corner alluvial structures. Sorry, alluvial sectors. So is it is it also? I mean, so once I allow myself alluvial sectors with corners, it's not a big uh, jump to allow higher co-dimension corners. Is there going to be an analog of your theory where I split this into sort of multiple terms instead of just two terms? Yeah, you can already do it because I'm doing it only one. I'm only considering one term at a time anyway. Also, if you look at the fully monomially admissible version of this, what I said is inside the fibers, I'm thinking of monomial admissibility, which means there's a bunch of terms with respect to which separately I control the argument. The, the fully, you know, if you go all in on monomial admissibility, you are being completely cornered. Uh -huh. Okay, very cool, thanks. Um, but with the idea that, yeah, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't quite need to. I mean, I, I kind of want to kind of treat what's inside the main fiber and WF as kind of a black box. You can decide if you want to further corner it or not, because I'm only going to look at one thing at a time. So at some point below, um, we're, we're gonna have to manipulate three terms rather than two. OK, so next we get to, um, so having kind of given hopefully some flavor of what these categories should feel like and how they behave, um, I want to get to functors that seem to have been playing more and more a key role in computations or understanding the structure of these things. So this has to do with monodromy. And of course, if you go back already 20 years, uh, Seidel already had noticed that there were things going on with monodromy in Lefschetz vibrations. Um, but subsequently, I mean, the rage these days is spherical functors or the language of Schober's uh, for how to understand what's going on. So the statement is, we can try to relate the Foucault category of a total space and that of a fiber. And now here again, I mean the fiber of what I'm, what I'm calling W0, still equipped possibly with the extra terms. If there's no extra terms, I just mean the wrapped category of F by itself. Um, 
so there's two functors called cup and cap these days, which are adjoint to each other and in fact are part of a spherical functor. And apologies to Ben and other experts that I'm not really a shower person, so I'm not going to be able to tell you where. I, I hear there's something called a monad somewhere in there, but I don't even know what that means. Um, but okay, so geometrically, the two functors go something like this. So the one from the fiber to the total space is called the cup functor or sometimes the Orloff functor. Um, and so what it does is you take a Lagrangian in the fiber or an admissible Lagrangian in the fiber and you parallel transport it along a U-shaped arc for the main projection W0. Okay, so this is in the base of W0. So this gives me a Lagrangian in the total space, which has in fact two ends towards plus infinity. One which looks like the initial Lagrangian little L, and the second one is the image of L under the clockwise monodromy uh, around the singular fibers. There could have been several critical values. I was lazy and just put one, but you go around all the critical values. Um, so for the stuffed people, this is also just instead, you can redraw this, of course, over an arc over here. So this is the linking um, construction. In, take a linking arc to a Lagrangian in the stop. And all right. Uh, and of course, there was a choice of direction. I chose to start from L in this leg and move it around clockwise. You could do it the other way. This is a choice of which side a junction you are going to have. The other functor called cap, usually, what it does is you take a Lagrangian in the total space and you look at its ends towards plus infinity. So in the language of sectors, you would define that, as, in fact, as a um, a restriction to a subdomain, uh, which is, and that subdomain would, I mean, basically you want to go back to a stabilization of a fiber by a restriction. But in other setups where you're strictly fibered, you just take a twisted complex built of the different Lagrangians that you see in the fibers. And that twisted complex has a connecting differential, which counts holomorphic sections over the regions by, between these legs. So in fact, this functor goes back to twisted complexes of the category of a fiber. Uh, you could just enlarge everybody to twisted complexes. So now we have one, in fact, we have two exact triangles of functors relating these things. So the first one is about functors on the fiber. On the Fouquet category of the fiber, I have an exact triangle relating the inverse monodromy, identity, and the composition cap cup. So this is exactly what does cap cup do? This is what I was explaining here. You take a Lagrangian little L, you transport it over a U shape, then you restrict to the legs. What you get is a copy of L, a copy of mu inverse of L, and in fact a connecting differential. So this is almost tautological with the right setup, but nonetheless, I should point out that this was uh, studied in particular by Abu Zaid Ganatra and by Zach Silvan. So what is this? There's, an, there's a natural transformation S here showing up in this exact triangle. What is it? It's a section counting process. It's something that counts sections of your vibration with boundary on a fibered Lagrangian that goes around all the singular fibers. And this is in fact a natural transformation that Seidel had already identified uh, well before cap and cup were in season. Um, so this is section counting, you know, over either regions like this or this region here. In the other direction, sorry, on the other side, we also have an exact triangle of functors between on the total space now. So on the total space, we have a functor called, uh, I'm calling it sigma, which I will say is wrap once past the stop. So what I mean is I take a Lagrangian L, big L now in the total space, 
and I take its ends and I bend them around. So sigma inverse is the one drawn here. I take its ends and I bend them once around in the negative direction for sigma inverse, positive direction for sigma. So there's a natural continuation map from identity to sigma inverse or from sigma to identity, uh, which comes from viewing this as the flow of a Hamiltonian that pushes Lagrangians in a negative direction. So there's a continuation map associated to that. And it turns out that the cone of this natural transformation is in fact cup cap. So if you think of cup cap of L, this starts from little l, which is cap of L, it's the end at infinity, and then you push it around the U shape, and now you see hopefully how these three Lagrangians might fit in an exact triangle. So this whole thing is part of a spherical functor. Um, the main description of this story in the language I'm familiar with is in works of Abu Zaid Ganatra and Zach Sylvan and uh, probably others around that orbit. But there's also discussions of that in, say, Nadler, Gamage, GPS, and so on from um, maybe a different perspective and also in the work of Kapranov and Schobers, and um, that probably goes back even to Konsevich Seibelman in some form or something like that. So, okay, so I think the main goal I want to have now is to play with a spherical functor and comment a bit on some of its features. So, one feature is that if you try to think of what does mirror symmetry, you know, how does this structure help you to understand homological mirror symmetry? Then you'll find that there's two schools of thought, depending on whether you come at it from HMS for, say, Fano varieties and Calabiao hypersurfaces inside them, or if you come at it from the perspective of mirror symmetry for hypersurfaces. And so, um, if, if I'm the world of HMS for, say, Fanos or log Calabiaos, or in fact, log Fanos as well. So, for example, uh, you might think, you know, a toric variety relative to its toric boundary or part of that. So, in general, if I have a variety X with effective first charm class, and I take D0 to be part of an anti canonical divisor, which I assume to be reduced, maybe normal crossings, you know, nice enough so that it's um, amenable to what we understand. Then the usual story is that we have a mirror to X, which is a Lando Ginzburg model. Um, the total space Y is in fact the mirror of a complement of the anti-canonical divisor in X, and the superpotential comes from the deformation of uh, the geometry that comes from compactifying again. So it comes from counting, in fact, contributions of D0 and D prime to the enumerative geometry in X is one way to do that. But Anyway, and so the other feature here is the fiber of W is mirror to the anti-canonical divisor. But in fact, what's more, the fiber of just certain terms in W equipped with the remaining terms are mirror to D0. So an example of this is if I look at P2 and inside that I take, say, the toric divisor, three lines, then I get C star squared, and the potential of that will be something like x plus y plus constant over xy. And now, if I want to just look at the part of this which comes from, say, D0 is a single line among these three, this is one of the three terms in the potential. Each of the three terms in the potential corresponds to a component in my divisor, and then W sub f. And you see now that the levels of x equipped with this function are indeed C stars with y plus constant over y, which is the mirror to P1. It's the mirror to D0 relative, in fact, to the intersection of D0 with D prime. 
So in this case, my spherical functor and the adjunction between cup and cap should be understood as an adjunction between inclusion and restriction uh, between coherent sheaves or perfect complexes on D0 and on X. And so the fiber F corresponds to the divisor D0, the total space corresponds to the ambient space X, and the two functors, so cup is inclusion, cap is restriction. And we have a diagram that's been verified in various forms for the toric case. Uh, maybe here I should mention, for example, the recent paper of Hanlon and uh, Hicks. But anyway, okay, so here's, all right. So anyway, so that, that's, that's one class of examples. On the other hand, if you go back to my example with a pair of pants, uh, more generally mirror symmetry for hypersurfaces, then the picture is actually reversed. If I look, for example, at C cubed with minus X, Y, Z, I said this is mirror to a pair of pants, which is a hypersurface in C star squared. And the fiber, C star squared, is the mirror to C star squared. So there's another class of setups where the total space is mirror to a hypersurface, and the fiber is mirror to the ambient space in which this hypersurface is embedded. And in that case, the diagram that we have, again, matches with inclusion and restriction, but in the opposite direction. Okay. Now, one of these two diagrams has a slight lie in it, because cap and cup, there's an adjunction in one direction. Um, one of those is right adjoint to the other, and the other one is left adjoint. And you need to change conventions slightly to reverse the adjunction. So you find this too easy, you can try to figure out which of these two diagrams has a slight lie. I think with the conventions I took, the left one has a twist. Anyway, so you can reinterpret the calculation of, you know, calculating mirror symmetry for, for example, the pair of pants in this language, in terms of this adjunction and spherical functor. Um, just by thinking of, well, if you look at U-shaped Lagrangians, you can move using adjunction the calculation to a calculation in the fiber. And that calculation using the exact triangle becomes a cone of homes in the fiber, but involving, of course, the monodromy and the section counting transformation. And the geometric content of that is the same as that of a direct calculation. And so this proves HMS by matching things with the same calculation where you have sheaves on a hypersurface and you resolve them on, uh, in, the, in the total space. Uh, but, okay, let's go to something slightly more interesting. So there's an apparent possibility to switch around the two sides of the spherical functor. And this is kind of what happens when we switch the picture between mirror symmetry for toric varieties and divisors in them, or more generally log calabiaos or log fanos and divisors in them, to the story about mirror symmetry for hypersurfaces. So of course, secretly, the mirrors of hypersurfaces are built by taking a mirror to an, a stabilization. So I mean, this is not a coincidence. Okay? I'm just reinterpreting known facts. So. The statement, which I want to make now as a conjecture because of the level of generality in which I am at this point, I'm kind of somehow, I mean, what I'm saying has to be conjectural just because the things I will, I mean, I can give you a proof. There's a proof down on the rest of this slide, but that proof assumes that um, all of the mess of definitions that we have play nicely together in a way that's not yet known. So the claim is we can swap the two ends of a spherical functor. Um, let me just put the functor back in here by a stabilization process. Namely, if I start from a landau ginzburg model with a splitting of a potential into a sum of two terms, then let's build a new larger space by taking the product of Y with the complex line. Let's call Z the new coordinate, 
and let's build a stabilized potential. You shouldn't glance too closely at the signs or at the coefficient T inverse or things like that in there. This is kind of probably not necessarily reliable. But basically, you want a potential which is Z, the new coordinate, times, you know, this, this might have been W0 minus T. This might have been a slightly different thing. Um, anyway, plus the fiber-wise potential. So what does this achieve? The claim is that this thing has a Foucault category which is equivalent to that of a fiber, and yet that in a suitable sense, it has a splitting of a potential where the fiber of a main term is the Landau Ginzburg model I had. So the claim is I can swap, I mean, basically this is something whose fiber is the old total space and whose total space is equivalent to the old fiber. So the key bridge there is some instance of a model Knorrer periodicity uh, on which the probably the ultimate expert at the moment is Maxim Jeffs. Um, so the statement is we expect the Foucault category of this stabilized Landau-Ginzburg model to be equivalent to that of a fiber by considering, in fact, a thimble construction for splitting the potential into this being the main term, z times 1 minus w0, and w sub f is the auxiliary term that we take along for a ride. So the observation is this function is in fact a Morse bot vibration. It's Morse bot along a copy of f times 0. It has critical locus at z equals 0 and w0 equals t. And so whenever you have a Morse bot vibration, means it has a smooth stratum of critical, of critical points, then the thimble construction upgrades Lagrangians in the critical locus to Lagrangians in the total space. Now, this only gives you a functor if you can avoid issues with, say, sign mismatches. You need the normal bundle to the critical locus to be spin. You also need to avoid uh, issues with enumerative geometry and so on. But I think this case should work. Um, and now, what else did I want to say? Right, so, so this should have the same category as that of a fiber by considering these two terms as being the main thing. However, now if I want to claim that the fiber of this landau ginzburg model is the same as my old y, then this is not the splitting I will use. I will, in fact, only take z as the main term and put the rest into the fiber. Then if this is the fiber-wise potential, I have w0 plus wf on y as the fiber of the main term. OK, so a comment here about the technical aspects. Um, one is that. The Knorrer periodicity result is for splitting the potential in such a way that these two terms are the main term, defining a more spot vibration. But for the fiber of the new potential to be the same as the old total space, you need to split things differently. So this scheme works well if you can, can move back and forth the term z times w0 between one side and the other of the story. And so this means having indeed either a multi-corner thing or some way of understanding what happens when you smooth corners and then put back in corners differently. And the other thing is there's a slight lie which has to do with sign issues in these formulas, which is that you can't quite swap cap and cup because of the one-sided adjunction between them. Um, so the fix for that is you have the other variant of a story where the cup functor goes counterclockwise instead of clockwise, or you change signs here and there, and things should fix themselves. Okay. And maybe the last thing I will say, since I don't think I will have time to go much further, is another important part of the story about this spherical functor has to do with what happens when you localize or take quotients. So uh, 
the part of the story that has been most studied is what happens when you localize with respect to wrapping ones. So this is something that has come up actually in several talks already, right? So remember, um, this natural transformation comes from taking admissible Lagrangians and pushing them once clockwise around, or you can define one in the opposite direction from sigma push counterclockwise to identity. And so this localization appears already in Abu Zaid and Seidel's work uh, on how to define wrapped Fleur theory out of Lefschetz vibrations. It says if you start wrapping more and more in this fashion, then you end up with actually having removed the stop. So another way to think of it is this is a stop removal along the stop, the part of the stop that corresponds to W0. So that's why I'm putting Sylvan and Ganatra Pardon Shende in the relevant names. And because of the uh, fact that basically the cone of this natural transformation is cup cap, this is the same as quotienting by the image of cup cap, but that's the same as the image of cup. So this matches the fact that removing the stop at W0 is the same as quotienting by the linking disks the Lagrangians obtained by do, applying cup to Lagrangians inside the fiber of W0. So if we do that, we end up with the category of just Y with only WF. We no longer have the stop at W0. And of course, if there was no WF, that means we have the fully wrapped category of Y. So in mirror symmetry for log Calabi-Yaos and Fanos, um, this corresponds to deleting the divisor D0 relative to which W0 corresponds to. Right? So you delete part of the anti-canonical divisor to take the complement, and that's what the localization does. Now, a slightly funnier thing to do, but the symmetry between the two sides of a spherical functor argues that we should be allowed to do that is to localize at the other one. Um, so if you localize instead with respect to the other natural transformation, S, so if you start with a fiber, so I should have said, if you localize the category of a fiber with respect to the natural transformation between monodromy and identity by counting sections, so this accounts, this amounts to quotienting by the image of cap, which means you quotient the fiber by all the vanishing cycles. Well, when there's a single critical value, if you have a single singular fiber, um, arguably one should think of this as the Foucault category of a singular fiber, F0, of your Lando Ginsburg model. Uh, so one example of that is if I have a Lefschetz vibration, then this would define the category of a singular fiber to be the quotient of that of a smooth fiber by the Lagrangian sphere. That's what localization at the Dane twist does. And this is consistent with mirror symmetry for, say, singular elliptic curves and punctured elliptic curves. Uh, another example, well, actually, it's still part of this category, exactly. this, is, this is that, right? If I take the, so x, y equals zero in C squared, a singular affine conic, I start from x, y equals T, a smooth conic, and I quotient by the S1, and this will give me, indeed, the mirror to the pair of pants, which is deleting a point from a cylinder. And the same works in higher dimensions. The wrap category of the union of coordinate planes in C cubed defined in this sense. So start with x, y, z equals t, but c star squared, and localize at the natural transformation that shows up in C cubed comma x, y, z. Uh, this ends up giving me coherent sheaves or perfect complexes on the complement of a pair of pants in C star squared, which is a two-dimensional pants, and that's also consistent with things. And so, in fact, there's a theorem in Maxim Jeff's recent paper, which exactly checks that this proposal for the Foucault category of a singular fiber is consistent with stabilization. Neuroperiodicity holds for 
uh, Fab Fouquet categories of singular hypersurfaces in this sense. And since I'm out of time, I think this is a very nice stopping point. So I will leave the final part of my talk to people to read in the notes if they care about, but it has even less content than the previous ones. So maybe you shouldn't be too disappointed. Okay, thank you for your attention. All right, let's thank Denis. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, I have not, <clears throat> not a, a question, but rather a comment in the form of a question. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, you, you, since you kind of mentioned that you, you, you are not an expert in, in Schobers or Monads, and my question is related to, to, to that, rather to that story, so maybe some other people can also participate in the discussion. So uh, kind of uh, there is a um, definition of the Foucault's ideal category with coefficients in, in the Schober. There was Schober, uh, we did it recently with Misha Kapranov and Lev Sukhanov. And I'm just curious how to incorporate your splitting of the potential into the sum of two. So abstractly, it does not look as a big change because uh, your Schober will come from this WF. You consider the uh, kind of Zydel category associated. Yeah, I, I think with that's the fiber, which also end up with, with a potential. I think that's completely correct. Basically, it's still a family of Fouquet categories over the base C for W0. Just the fiber-wise category is that of WF, which you can handle with Schobers if you want. And now you have a family of Fouquet categories over C, just each of them is itself a Fouquet aside category rather than a Brab category. But I think that doesn't change. Ah, that, okay. that shouldn't change anything. Yeah, that's true. But uh, and uh, okay, maybe I can comment. At the level of computations, if your WF is equal to zero, kind of a old story, mm, uh, then <clears throat> our definition involves the notion of the Fourier transform of, uh, of the Schober. And now since it does have mm, the potential, it will be something like a, a Fourier transform of the irregular D module. It's analogous because you have this exponent of WF. So maybe at the level of computations, indeed, it's it's a different story. At the level of definition, kind of, it's the same. It's a Fourier transform of some algebra of the monad, blah, blah, blah. But uh, to compute it, it will be more difficult. OK. okay. Uh, 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 all right. OK. To, to the extent that I understand what you say, which is very limited, I think that sounds correct. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you, Dini. Other questions? Uh, can you say something? Why, in the beginning, do you, for mirror symmetry purposes, do we want to always include the singularities at infinity? Well, essentially because they should enter into things, right? Um, so if if I go back to that example I had over here, if I just think of C star squared with x one plus x two, if I don't do anything special. Well, this has no singular fibers, right? I mean, in the usual sense, this has no singularities. And if you, sorry, what do I want to say? So a lot of the theme that people, you know, have in mind is, well, you, think, you don't think about monodromy around singular fibers and what is the cup functor doing when you go around a singular fiber and so on. And for all purposes, this fiber over zero in this example has to be, treated like a singular fiber because, in fact, the cup functor around it gives access to something non-trivial. Right? Remember, this lando ginzburg model is the mirror to C squared, and db co of C squared is non-trivial. Yeah, I understand that example. So like in, uh, maybe I misunderstood it, but like in Maxime's paper, or Maxime Jeff's paper, uh, is, he was, he has, he seems to be like only, he seemed to be avoiding the singularities of infinity if I, or, 
Like well, so, I, there was. A, I, there's I think that's again on the, on the same grounds of you, using, you know, basically the cup functor to study Lagrangians, which are fibers over arcs that go around the singular fibers rather than passing through them. Uh, it's but so, I mean, maybe this is getting too specific, but like, he he. In his setup, he like takes a small disk around like the around zero, such that like all of the points where this like Malgrange condition fails are outside of this disk. But I thought those points are like where the singularities at infinity are. Right, but the standing assumption in the periodicity paper, I believe, is that there's a single critical value. So essentially, the statement there is if you had other critical values other than zero, including in the sense of not a classical critical point, but failure of Malgrange condition, mm -hmm. then you should restrict your total space to a smaller disk so that you don't include those by mistake. Because otherwise, all of the claims being made about monodromy relating to quotienting by vanishing cycles at the origin and so on become false because one needs to correct the statement by the vanishing cycles of the singularities at infinity. I see. But like for mirror symmetry purposes, I should be taking like the whole thing, or? I believe so. But I, I don't know yeah. of examples where there's a mix of both. I mean, I guess one could group up some. But yeah, yeah, yeah. For mirror symmetry, you should be looking at the whole thing. It's just that uh, the, the... If you want to study the, the singular study fiber, though, yeah, yeah. What you want is a single hypersurface at the time, yeah. yeah. I see. OK, thank you. Sure. All right. If there are no other questions, let's thank Denis again. And we'll resume in 25 minutes.